Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look back at a Breeders' Cup Challenge Series event. This race, the Grade 2 Suburban, a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup Classic. The race was held at Belmont Park on July 3rd, going a mile and a quarter, and it featured the rematch from last fall's Jockey Club Gold Cup. Happy Saver undefeated on the way in in his second start of the year against the leader of the handicap division, Dubai World Cup winner, Mystic Guide. We break from the gate. Moretti, Happy Saver's stable mate, is going to show the lead, uh, show the way on the lead from the inside post. Moretti, more of a marathon type. We see Mystic Guide, the number four ticket up a close spot but look at max player this is some newfound tactical speed for a horse that's always shown some ability uh, yeah that that's true this horse has always had ability dan i don't think you know I, he was a little bit of an upset winner here i don't think it was that surprising necessarily to anybody who's followed him that he was able to be competitive with the two favorites in here i think the biggest surprise of the race was the way that he wins it because he had never shown this kind of speed before and Moretti is carving out a legitimate pace over this sealed sloppy track. They're going to stop the half mile in 47.67 seconds. Meanwhile, Mystic Guide is down towards the inside with his rival Happy Saver outside. Were you surprised that Moretti and Flavian Pratt leave the rail open for the Dubai World Cup winner? He's going to squeeze on through on the turn. Yeah, a little surprised, I guess, that he didn't uh, try to shut things off there for his stable mate who's staying out in the clear all the way around the track. Either way, Mystic Guide is going to move up the rail here, Dan, and it just sort of feels like once they get around this turn with Max Player doing a good job here to keep himself involved while three wide, it feels like once Mystic Guide gets through here and eventually gets to the lead, that that's probably going to be it and he's going to go on and win this thing, but Max Player wouldn't let him get away. Happy Saber's got to look at this. These three horses battling in front of him at the three-eighths, but he's been hard-ridden for a while now, and I just wonder if he didn't care for this wet track. I worry. I wonder that as well. I'd be willing to give him another chance out of this race. Not only did he, you know, was he hard-ridden for a long way, but he was wide every step of the way in here. He still has a look at this thing down to about mid-stretch, Dan, but he's just not really finding. The Happy Saber that we you know, saw a run three or four times last year, always finished really strongly in his races. He doesn't have much of a finish here. Mystic Guide was really awkward with his lead changes in this race. He was on his right lead on the turn, on his left lead for a lot of the stretch. He fights hard with Max Player, but it looked like he had Max Player's number at the quarter pole, and that horse just came back and beat him on the square. Mystic Guide just got beat here. That's how I looked at it, too. I don't think you could, you know, really give him an excuse um, from the trip perspective unless you feel like coming up the inside wasn't what you wanted to do. I didn't see any evidence of that on the card at Belmont. Um, so it just feels like he showed up. He probably ran, you know, his race and he just came out second best at the end. You saw his rider there, Louis Sia, sort of drifting him off the inside to engage with Max Player late. But it wasn't enough. Max Player um, just had a little bit too much for him. I know you've been a big fan of Max Player for a while, and he obviously showed some ability as a three-year-old. Not only did he win the Withers, he was third in the Belmont and the Travers, and he had trips in some of his other races. Uh, the Saudi Cup was a race in which he had no chance. In the Pimlico Special, he tried to race wide from the back over an inside speed favor and track. So he was dirtied up coming into this race. Did you ever expect this kind of performance from him? Because Max Player, all of a sudden, is a player in the classic division. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I'm I'm not surprised that he was able to be competitive with horses like Mr. Guide and Happy Saber. This horse has shown uh, ability from day one. Um, the most surprising thing about it was just the way that he won the race, because, again, he's not a horse who would ever been able to get forward in his races. Even when he was relatively close early, Dan, he was always a horse who had to be ridden from the start. He just never really had a lot of speed. And listen, maybe the sloppy track has something to do with that. The only other time he ran in the slop, he was another easy winner over Maiden. So there's obviously an argument to be made that he really likes a wet track. Um, but if he's going to be able to show this kind of tactical speed going forward, he's going to be a major player in some big races. Well, you answered my next question. I was going to posit the wet track question to you. Max Player does seem to appreciate it. Happy Saver, I don't think, really cared too much for it. He was wide. This was the first defeat in his career, but I'm not going to get off of him just yet. Uh, Todd Pletcher mentioned the Whitney or even waiting for the Jockey Club Gold Cup for his next start. This was only his second race of the year. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I'm not going to get off him just yet either. Um, and and I'm happy to give him the wet track excuse. He was uh, he was a really good. He looked like he was going to be a really good horse last year as a three year old. You know, his return from the layoff um, back at the end of May was fine. It just kind of felt like the race that that he was always going to win. 
Um, so you, I think you were sort of expecting him to take a step forward um, here in the Suburban. That didn't happen, but maybe the wet track um, is a viable excuse for him. I know it's easy to be disappointed with Mystic Guide, but I wonder if he was really comfortable down on the inside over a sloppy track. His first race back from Dubai, was he really cranked up considering it's a long year? I think you can look at it and say, no, the next race says a little bit more about Mystic Guide, and it looks like right now uh, trainer Michael Stidham is looking at the Jockey Club. He's also thinking about maybe sending him to Del Mar for the Pacific Classic. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what he does. He's obviously a really nice horse, I, but you know, let's let's be honest. Um, this is a horse who um, got a lot of hype very quickly um, this year, and while I'm not denying that he improved from three to four, um, his big win um, to kick off that, this campaign was the Razorback, where he beat Silver Prospector and Owendale. Um, and you know, the Dubai World Cup is not the race that it that it used to be, and so I'm not going to give him too much credit for handling that field. He's obviously very good. Um, and we'll see what he does from here. I didn't see the excuse for him not to win this race. All things considered, Moretti ran just fine at his second start of the year. He's just not a horse at a mile and a quarter, a mile and an eighth, the likes of the top three. But he is a marathoner, and there is a race coming up at Saratoga, I believe a race that he won last year, the Birdstone. And it looks like he's going to be tough in that race in 2021. Yeah, he does look like a horse who really appreciates longer distances. And I think that's uh, the plan that Pletcher has mapped out for him for the rest of the year. He's going to be tough in those races. Let's take a look at Max Player's horse card. He is now three for 10 lifetime based on his victory in the Suburban. Mike did mention he is two for two lifetime over wet tracks. Max Player received a 101 buyer speed figure, a career best for his victory in the Suburban. And Steve Asmussen's going to work backwards from the Breeders' Cup Classic. It'll be interesting to see what's next. I wouldn't be surprised if the Woodward is sort of the sort of medium range goal for this horse. It feels like he deserves chances in those kinds of races. And it's going to be very interesting to see what he does in his next start because you still have the questions, you know, surrounding him going forward with the wet track and the newfound speed. And we got a price in the Breeders' Cup Challenge Series win and you're in the Suburban. Max Player, $25.60 as the 11 to 1 fourth choice in this field of six. Mystic Guide second, Happy Saver third, Moretti fourth, completing the 10 cent Superfecta, which returned $16.32. So it'll be interesting to see where these three horses are placed in the summer and into the fall as we head towards the Breeders' Cup.